So much of what I've learned from globalization and autonomy and from building global democracy is built into my brand new collaborative project, which we've called the Brazil-Canada Knowledge Exchange, Developing Transnational Literacies. So this program involves a partnership between universities and between teachers, teachers groups, students and researchers in Canada and Brazil. So what do we mean by transnational literacies? It's a blanket term for us to encompass the growing list of literacies that are seen to be necessary for successful innovation in the global knowledge economy. To pluralize literacy is to recognize that older and often ethnocentric notions of literacy are being challenged by both technological changes and decolonizing initiatives. Literacy in the plural acknowledges the many ways in which people make meanings. In pluralizing literacy, we link our work to the cognitive justice movements discussed above. And in modifying literacies with the adjective transnational, we refer to the fact that our lives are becoming global in ways that may change our experience of what it means to be a national subject. Such changes in how we live our nationality do not, as some fear, necessarily erode our sense of national belonging and obligation. In fact, they may deepen it. And some of you may have been following the discussion in the globe over the last two days about um, the Canadian diaspora abroad, Canadians who live and work abroad, um, and the way in which our, our various governance structures, including taxation and voting systems, should perhaps be changed to recognize the new global reality of what we call brain circulation rather than just immigration and emigration as if they were permanent conditions. Um, so the nation is changing how we understand it, how we run it in a globalizing world. And so its role in education is also currently under pressure globally. So our project's designed in the belief that Canada and Brazil can learn from each other, and together we hold the potential to co-create the kind of pedagogical initiatives and educational reforms that will help our students learn for living successfully in our changing world. So transnational literacies combine hemispheric awareness and global consciousness with the development of competencies suitable for full participation in the knowledge society. They encompass the digital, multimodal, informational, visual, textual, and critical literacies that are associated with both traditional reading and writing skills and the range of new literacies required by evolving information technologies and new media platforms. So our approach to transnational literacy works through considering the changing role of global English and what it means to teach English in different local contexts, each of which engages the global in different ways. So the case for building this kind of a dialogue between Canada and Brazil has been well made and it's increasingly recognized by governments in both countries. This hemispheric term is part of the regionalization initiatives that accompany globalization. The Canadian Council on Learning Report to Parliamentarians in 2010 notes problems in the Canadian higher education sector when seen in global contexts, and it identifies literacy as an issue of particular concern. Challenges facing education in Brazil have also been widely described by national and global actors, such as the World Bank. So how to meet these new demands is a matter of dispute, but most agree that education for international understanding will be key. Certain dimensions of globalization, such as the European Union's Bologna Agreement and tuning process that's been underway for the last 11 years, seem to encourage standardization in education globally. 
Other dimensions are leading to increased appreciation of local and regional differences. And the opportunities these differences afford communities, as well as the frictions they create. So our work respects regional differences without discounting national needs and global demands. Areas of special interest are citizenship education and language education. We have a complementary interest in the implications of globalization for educational policy at international and local scales. Within this rapidly changing context for knowledge creation and exchange, global English and English teaching in different national contexts have become particular points of contention. And we recognize that today competence in the English language is necessary but not sufficient. All teaching of English today needs to recognize that we live in a world of polyglot nations in which multilingualism and multiculturalism have become a necessity for most world citizens. So on the one hand, we, we know that English is an important global language. On the other hand, the statistics are still quite sobering. Only 6% of the world population has English as a first language. And there are still 75% of the world population that knows no English at all. So in this kind of a context, cross-national partnerships such as ours have an important role to play in positioning Canada for a networked society. You may have noticed the Brazil-Canada framework agreement that was announced in August last year, designed to strengthen the binational relationship between our countries. We see our research as contributing to this kind of endeavor. The summary of findings from the Digital Youth Project in 2008 concluded that participation in the digital age means more than being able to access serious online information and culture. Youth could benefit from education being more open to forms of experimentation and social exploration that are generally not characteristic of educational institutions. And they conclude with a set of questions that we too are asking. How can each partner take full advantage of the learning opportunities made available through new media? How redesign spaces of learning through developing revised forms of community partnerships and networks? And how ensure that new literacies associated with new media are integrated creatively within critical and transnational literacy perspectives? New technologies offer potentially transformative possibilities for imagining connections across previously distant communities. And we've been experimenting with a lot of these new technologies at the Center for Globalization and Cultural Studies, as you can see from my bio page. Um, so in this kind of context, we've established the following goals. One, to strengthen transnational literacy and cross-cultural understanding in Brazil and Canada. Two, to work with English teachers and teachers in training to integrate theory and practice, developing site-specific pedagogies appropriate to global challenges. Three, to advance understanding of how globalization is impacting education in Canada and Brazil. And four, to advance the Brazil-Canada relationship. Five, to contribute to understanding how to make this kind of partnership work 